represent that rapidly rising and rambunctious group, the Righteous Apples. Someone needs to do something, because Robert is revving up all the white kids to fight it. If the class wasn't an issue, I'd find another flag to wave. You can count on that. You know, knowing you, James, I ain't at all surprised. <laughs> but it just so happens that this time you're in the money, brother. I'm hip. This class is way overdue. Yeah, I mean, most black kids really can't get down using the textbooks they're using with that antiseptic lingo. I mean, someone's got to bridge the gap some kind of way. You know what I'm talking about, brother? <laughs> Hey, look, just don't use this class to start World War III, dig? Hey, you just tell that to Robert and his boys. Hey, you guys wait up. Why don't you just stand up and be at that rally on Monday and leave the feed Newton at home? Why is he always on my case, man? Your tan ain't deep enough, brother. <laughs> and so, Winston, Mr. Hellman and I have decided that you'll represent the students at Monday's PTA meeting. Uh, Mrs. Kidd and I would rather attend the rally for the black English class. Really, Winston? You? Well, why not me, Mrs. Kidd? Well, Marion, language is the way to bridge the gap between their world and ours. Right, Winston? Well, sir, I think I it's, know. A it's a language unto itself. I remember when I was first turned on to it. I don't know, the rhythm, energy excited mm. me. As a youth counselor, New York City, back in 1964. Hey, white man, what's wrong with your sky? I looked up in the air, and they were talking about my hat on top of my head. <laughs> Those were the good old days. Sometimes I feel like a pioneer. Mm, sometimes I feel like an Indian. <laughs> well, you can't mean that, Winston. You're very special. We need you as an example, as a leader to offset uh, the rabble-rousing efforts of some of our students. Thank you, Mrs. Cannon. Well, Winston, I wish there were more black students here at Sherwin High that you know, could match your achievements. Well, a black English class would help that. I understand that, Winston. This is our first year of integration. There's tension in the school. When it calms down, we'll explore the question further. So, you speak at the PTA meeting? Yes, sir. That's good. Hey, Winston, come here. I said, come over here. What is it this time, James? What is it this time, James? Yeah, what it is, brother? You been in the shiny shoes again? No, I was in there talking to Mrs. Ken about... Hey, shut up. Hey, listen up. Now, I want to give you a chance to prove your blood. Blood. And you speak up at that rally on Monday. Now, wait a minute, James. Mrs. Ken is... Hey, it's the that old bra. <laughs> You can pull in a lot of the middle of the road, brothers and sisters. Why don't you be black for a change? James, Mrs. Ken is considering a black English class. She just told me so. Ah, damn. Well, you can just trust her to make the right move at the wrong time. But look, you just keep that information to yourself, because she ain't cooling out my troops. But I'm trying I to say it. Keep your flabby mouth shut, house boy. Hey, what's happening? Hey, man. Hey, uh, are you going to the rally? Well, I haven't made up my mind yet, Sandy. Now, I'm definitely for that black English class and student rights as usual. Hey, well, maybe you should come, Nick. I mean, because people yeah. listen to you, man. Yeah. Well, jam. Well, well, if it ain't the organizers of the black English class. Hey, that's my locker you got your ugly arm on. 
Excuse me. Man, don't yeah. apologize to that trash. I said move it, sucker. Now, is that English black enough for you? Stay right where you are. Man, man it's looking I bad. I said get man. out of my I'm way. Sick. You want him out of the way? You're going to have to move. Ain't that right, Winston? <laughs> What's wrong with you? What do you and say, look, look, sissy? Look, just come through, man. Maybe they ride it out. Look, man. I gotta go anyway. That's right, you gotta go. Back to the school you came from. Then why you gonna talk through that fucking white man? You face Dr. Come on! We gotta do something, man. Let's do something. Hey, hold on. Let's help him. Oh, my God! Mr. Shelbourne! Yeah. And you say this Winston kid pulled a knife, stabbed Hellman, and ran off? That's right, officer. Can you add anything to that? Sad what? Like he said. Boy, Sherwin really seems to be heating up these days, huh? Real change of climate. Okay, that's all. We'll call you if there's anything else. I like you've been doing it all your life. I've been studying with experts like you. Yeah, but just remember, we can both get something out of this. Yeah, so you told me. Yeah, black student, nice white administrator. Yeah, that's gonna kill this integration thing quick. And you can hop on back to Chocolate City. That'd suit me just fine. And you can take your lily white school to show it. Look, why don't you just save your breath for dying trash? You know, the next time we meet, sucker, I'm gonna make you eat them words. Yeah, we're gonna see who eats what. You're gonna burn, sucker, real soon. Yeah. Hey, gang, what's going on? Oh, I can't believe it. Sandy just told us what went down at school. I know. I mean, it was like. Uh, a hey, excuse me, kids. Is this the cider press? Yeah. 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 Is this where the righteous apples hang out? Of course. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I'm looking for uh, Charles McMorris. Hey, well, my tan isn't deep enough, man. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Earl Cavanaugh, Boston Metropolis. This is my photographer, Denise. Hi. Oh, hi, Denise. Hey, uh, are you here to publicize our gig on Friday? Yeah. Okay. Your gig? What is your gig? Hey. I don't know. It's just been oh, fun. Thanks for stopping by, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, wait, 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 just a second. Look, I, I've got to find Charles McMorris or Sandra Burns and Samuel Rosencrantz. Uh, I'm Rosencrantz, Sandy. I understand you saw a black student butchering one of the white teachers at Sherwin High today. Did they find Winston yet? Nope. The cops are still dredging the sewers for him. I don't understand why Winston would do something like that. Yeah, he was always such a level-headed guy. Huh? You already know what you want to say, so why are you asking us? Hey, what righteous apples? I've been trying to tell you that's our group. Why are you taking out. so many pictures? Hey, that's not my good side. <laughs> you don't have a good side. I do, too. Hey, you guys, what's going on? Oh, now, they're from the yeah. Metropolis. They've been taking our yeah, pictures, they, man. They want to interview us about Hillman. Good side. Get my good side. My good side's right here. Hey, no more pictures, okay? Hey, I said no more. My... Didn't I say no more pictures, DC? Right. Yeah, uh, no uh, more pictures, Wait, later. wait. Are, are you, uh, you, uh, Charles McMorris? Yeah. Come on, you guys. Let's go. Really? Hey, 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 but I've got some questions. And look, we saw what happened in school today, but there's enough racial tension going down. And that's without the papers playing. I just want the facts. I'm giving you the facts, man. We're trying to cool out the situation at school, not heat it up, mister. That's right. This could blow up into a real bad scene. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Nope. Well, thanks a lot. Come on, Denise. You guys, tell me. Tell me. You know what I'm saying? I just can't, I know the apples, and I just can't believe that they would intentionally contribute to hostilities in this way. I find it difficult to understand myself. But here it is in black and white. Yeah, there's got to be an explanation. Well, in any case, I need your help now more than ever. You got it. Yes? Good morning. Hey, Mrs. Good morning, Charles. You sent for me, Mrs. Kent? Sit down, please. I'm very disappointed in you, Charles. What? What are you talking about? This. Black student stabs white administrator. Hey, Mrs. Kent, that picture. Uh oh, right? there's more to it than that picture. Let me read it to you, Charles. As soon as in the cider press. Uh, Charles McMorris, the leader of a neighborhood gang called the Righteous Apples expressed his fear that Sherwin High School, one of the hot spots of racial tension in the city, 
could erupt into chaos as a result of a recent stabbing. Well, I say it then. Now, that sounds almost like a threat, Charles. Mrs. Kent, that reporter... That each... reporter got a byline on a page one interview thanks to you and your apples. Well, now what are we going to do? We? I'm going to start running this school the way it should be run, with discipline and a firm hand. And in view of the circumstances, I can risk no further trouble. Any plans for a black English class are hereby canceled. That's all, Charles. We'll talk later. Charles, we close doors. You close doors, Mrs. King. I blew it, didn't I? Sky high. What's happening to us? I mean, the school's falling apart, the apples are getting in trouble. Yeah, our first TV shot's coming up next week. Yeah. Hey, you guys. I'm sorry I'm late. What's happening, Dad? I've been taking care of business. You know, I just came from talking to Winston's parents. Winston? And they're afraid if the police find Winston, he'll freak. Uh -oh. And maybe get himself killed. Oh, no. And man, that's why we got to find him first. Why us? Because if Winston gets blown away by the cops, that'll give Robert and James the fuel they need to set Sherwin on fire. Okay, wasting time. Where do we start looking for this dude? Hey, look. Okay, now I was figuring. Look, why don't we? Yeah, we'll check the parks, okay? Yeah, you better tell Seems you are very lucky, Howard. Really? Somehow I haven't taken that point of view. The doctor says the knife missed your lung by that much. I wish the knife would have missed my lung by <coughs> this much. I just don't understand. Winston, of all people, he's always been such a nice young man. It's simple. We stopped being nice. But why? I don't care why. I mean, I've had it, Mary, and I'm getting the hell out. Oh, where would you go? Suburbs, I guess. I don't know. I'm going to try to get a teaching job in the suburbs. I wish you wouldn't abandon us. We need you. Those kids need you. For what? Target practice. Oh, listen, I understand your fear. I, I really do. I'm I'm not without fear myself, but but if we run away, where will those kids find the courage to stay? It's hopeless, Marion, and you know it. If you were smart, you'd get the hell out too. Well then I guess I'm not very smart. days and just this area never find Winston. Yes. Well, here you guys look, it's two o'clock and JT and DC ought to be here soon. Oh, shit. Hey, JT! What you find, man? Anything? Nothing. Man, I've been on so many rooftops, I feel like a pigeon. <laughs> DC, huh? Damn. Come on, man. No. I've been through every condemned tenement around. I got stopped by the cops a couple times, and then I almost got bitten by this rat who was twice the size of me. Then I go uptown, I got hit on by this... Uh, hell, I don't know what he was. <laughs> oh, that's our DC. Winston! Hey, hey, man, we've been looking all over you for you! You look terrible! Come Hold on, on get him on the couch. What's wrong? I thought you guys were fair. I thought I could trust you guys. What are you you sprung about? out on something? I don't know why you lied about me like that. Why? You why? Can't make sense. What's the show Oh, like hell, I'm not. I saw the newspaper. Why did you lie about me like that? Hey, look, we didn't lie. We you saw you stabbed, right? But that's not the way it happened. It didn't happen like that. Uh, see, Mr. Mr. Hellman was coming out of Mrs. Kent's office. I saw Robert had that knife in his hand. He was going to stab James. I knew that Robert was going to kill him, so I, I grabbed the knife just as Mr. Hellman ran up to me. Before I realized what happened, Hellman was behind me, and, and I turned around, and the knife pierced his stomach. I was so afraid, I just ran. Then I don't know. 
just everybody's hassling me too much. I just snapped. Wow. From where we were standing, I thought, I'm yeah. sorry. I know. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Change your angle just that much. The whole picture looks different. We gotta explain this to the police. And his folks. Wait, look, I call his folks, but no police yet. How come? Hey, look, who's gonna believe it? Then that means James lied, man. I mean, why would he cover for Robert? Yeah. I know how we can find out. How? Why isn't he here? You think he'll show? He'll be here. <laughs> what happened to your James Bond attitude, DC? <laughs> you know, it disappeared when I found out this stuff was for real. You got a lot of nerve calling and asking me to meet you here. What do you want? We want to join your team. You guys already got a team. Mixed nuts. <laughs> Not anymore. Now, why do I find it hard to believe you guys? See, Sandy, I oh, told you. Oh, why do you think we lied about the knife, Robert? Right. You lied? Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come off it. Yeah, come off it, man. You shut up. You bet. <laughs> Listen. We saw you pull the knife out of your locker and go for James. And then we saw Winston grab the knife away from you and fall into Hillman. That's right. Come on. I ain't buying that. What about McMorris? No, why didn't you didn't see it? I thought I told it. you to stop it, little man. Now, is this all straight? How else would we know? I mean, <laughs> that's what really happened, isn't it? Why would you guys lie to save my skin? Because your tan ain't deep. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you guys don't expect me to believe you turned on your chocolate friends, huh? Oh, don't you understand, Robert? We were only with him for the music. That's right. And when things really come down in Sherwin, us white guys got to stick together, right? Mm. Right. <laughs> you know, Robert, you're really something else. <laughs> Well, well, the matzo boy and the little fox finally come around, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know, I got some special plans for just me and you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> got it all, sweet, huh? <laughs> Why are you doing this for me? doing this for all of us, Winston. Oh, boy, it's figures. I've been trying to please everybody all my life, and I always end up in the middle being pushed and shoved and, and dumped on. And now this. Oh, I thought you were supposed to be some kind of genius, Winston. Big deal, an IQ of 150, and all this ever got me is trouble. Well, you should be smart enough to know that you can change that. Oh, no, I can't change that. I tried that. Boy, James sure did get the right person to play martyr. What? You just love being the victim, huh? Poor stepped on Winston. I thought this racial stuff got you down, but I was wrong. It's your point of view. You're choosing to be where you are, Winston. I've been used all my life. Now, how do I change that? By saying enough and by taking one step. Maybe you get off by being used. Whoa, wait a minute. Yeah? Oh, we bought it? Oh, great. Bye -bye. <laughs> Robert spilled his guts on tape, James. And I told Big Neck exactly what happened that day. It was an accident that Robert pulled out a blade and tried to cut you. Yeah, and Winston grabbed a knife, trying to save your hide, and fell in the hill. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't that something? And you and all your white friends ran around telling everybody that you saw Winston's damn helmet. Worked out perfect. Yeah, but both you and Robert said you saw Winston pull the knife. You 
guys was gonna just let him hang there. Yeah, he's got the picture. Why, James? Why me? You know, I thought he was jiving me. I couldn't believe that even you'd use a brother. He ain't no brother. Now, I was doing Uncle Tommy here a favor, making him martyr for the cause. What the hell cause are you fighting for, James? Man, I'm ticked off at the way they treat us at Sherwin. I can get us back to our old school, man. I'm not going to let it rest. And if you got to come down, brother, you may want to tear this town apart, but I don't. We using it was just an opportunity. Boy, this thing has really twisted you. I mean, to the point that you'd sacrifice one of our best minds for your own personal trip. Yeah, that's right. Because Robert convinced me that the black cause had more to gain if Winston had played Fall Guy for a while. Robert convinced you? James, I can't believe that you're that dumb. That you can't realize you're taking cues from the very people you say you despise. You know, none of this would have happened, man, if he hadn't tried to save your life. Let's get out of here, man. How'd I do? By the way, you're looking at Sherwin High's new assistant principal. <laughs> All right. Get down, Mr. Shelworth. Oh, it couldn't have happened to a nicer history teacher. And I'm sure Mr. Hellman will be very happy at Chapman High, too. I think so. You know, it's about time they recognize the contributions you've been making. Thanks a lot, McMars. Yeah. And the whole school owes the apples a great deal for bringing peace to Sherwood. Come on. Uh, we only did what comes naturally. <laughs> Natural born troubleshooters. That's us. Uh, come on. Uh, by the way, James came to me with the truth, and now the police have him and Robert both. Ooh. Good. Hey, yeah. what's happening to Winston? Charges yeah. against him were dropped. Oh, oh good. He was just a helpless victim. Not so helpless in the end, though. Tell us about right. brother. Right. Yes. Uh, and Nick, uh, by the way, I convinced Mrs. Kent the time for the black English class is now. Hey, what? stay ahead, Mr. Shelbourne. Hey. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Shelbourne. Oh, good, good morning, Mrs. Kent. Everyone. Hello. Hi, Mrs. Hi, Mrs. Kent. Hi, Mrs. Kent. I uh, thought you all might like to see this morning's Boston Metropolis. Huh? Hey, you guys, these wow. front page news. Look at that. Look at that. Whoa! Oh, fantastic! Look, they quoted me, man. Oh, great publicity for our TV show this Friday. <laughs> and for our school and for the good things that go on here. That's right. Charles, I hope you'll accept my apologies for speaking so harshly to you the other day. My only excuse is the fear I had over what might have happened. Mrs. K. Anytime. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hey, everybody, listen to this. It was at first believed that the stabbings carried strong racial overtones, but thanks to the efforts of the righteous apples, it was learned that the near tragedy was accidental. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. hey, we're heroes. Yeah. So maybe we can get a movie deal out of this, huh? Oh, hey. DC. Yeah, DC walks on the wild side, huh? <laughs> Is that your good side? He doesn't have one. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Uh, how about uh, DC gets to class? Oh, okay. There you go, you guys. Yeah. All right. Hey, look, Mrs. Kent, Mr. Shelbourne, make certain you guys watch us on TV this Friday. Okay. Oh, right. yeah. Okay. Okay. Two things reducing our heating bills and this. <laughs> Hurry up, Jerry. You know Mama does. <laughs>
on Masterpiece Theatre tomorrow evening at 9, Lily's indiscretions have caught up with her. Next this evening, Cinema Classics, The Cowboy and the Lady. Righteous Apples was played before a studio audience. <laughs> Funding for the Righteous Apples was provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.